What do you think that will look like? Whoever this secret admirer is, they must really want me to play meh EA published PS1 games from 1999. Today's present? Sledstorm. Let's check it out. Oh, oh shit, my hat! Oh. Okay, now we're ready. Man, I don't really know how to feel about this game. Does that mean it's getting a 5 out of 10? Yeah, let's just get that out of the way. Now, I have featured this game on the channel before. If you may recall, Sledstorm was one of 10 games I played in my Once a Year Games video back in 2021, episode 38. Yes, I remember what episode number that was. You can thank my autism for that. But in that video, I didn't really say much about the game. I just played it. So today, we're gonna take a proper look at it because there certainly isn't any other game from a more well-known series that I have yet to review. <sighs> One day, but not today. But before we dive in, let me give you a little history lesson about how I found this game. Well, during summer breaks in my grade school years, my mom would drop me off at my babysitter's when she and my dad had to go to work. My sitter's daughter had a PS1 along with some games. I want to say her brother gave them to her when he got the PS2, but I'm not sure. Anyway, when I was there, I would run upstairs to the PS1 to play a bunch of the games she had. She had Crash Warped, a demo disc that had Bash on it, Search for Reptar, and somewhere in that mix, there was also Sledstorm. I remember playing it pretty frequently back then and begging my mom for a copy, but sadly, I never got one. Until 2018, when I bought it on eBay for a whopping 5 bucks. So, that's my history. Now, let's not waste any more time. Sledstorm, released in 1999 for the PS1, not to be confused with its PS2 sequel, released in 2002 under the same name, was published by good old Electronic Arts and developed by EA Vancouver. Who are they? Why, the devs of all the EA Sports titles, of course. Madden, FIFA, NHL, NBA Live, you get it. Oh, sorry, it's not FIFA anymore, it's <laughs> EA Sports FC. <laughs> God, that's stupid. The game begins with an epic intro, accompanied by the Hot Rod Herman remix of Rob Zombie's Dragula. This remix was also featured in Twisted Metal 4 and Gran Turismo 2. That's three 1999 PS1 racing games. Naughty Dog couldn't make it four? Imagine hearing this song on Turbo Track instead of Tiny Arena's music. This game includes a variety of tweaks and adjustments in the options menu, including turning the rubber banding off. Sledstorm 1, Mario Kart 0. You can also remap the buttons if you wanted to. This is a neat thing to have, but I stuck with the default controls. In fact, I didn't even know about this until I recorded the footage for this video. That's how forgettable it is. This game has two different sets of courses, Open Mountain and Super Snowcross. Open Mountain consists of 8 courses, while Super Snowcross consists of 6. We have 6 original characters to choose from, and 2 more can be unlocked in the Super Snowcross mode. More on that later. In the Championship mode, you race your snowmobile through each Open Mountain course, against 3 other CPUs. There are 4 waves, with each giving you 3 chances to come in first. The first wave takes you through the first 4 courses. Wave 2 adds 2 more courses. Wave 3 has you go through every course again, except at night and the final wave takes you to the summit, where the last two courses are located. Holding L1 or R1 will make your rider lean either left or right, allowing for slightly sharper turns. By holding either L2 or R2 plus a direction on the D-pad, you can perform tricks, and the manual even gives you the list of tricks that you can do. Some can be combined for more points. In the open mountain courses, you earn money by winning races and performing tricks. Said money can be used to purchase upgrades for your sled to improve its stats. And believe me, you're gonna want to do this, because these courses get tougher and tougher, and so do the AI. You'll race across snow, slush, ice, and even thin ice broken into chunks. Your sled can tip over if you're not careful, and if you bail, your rider will have to restart the sled. There's an upgrade you can purchase that instantly restarts your sled upon respawning. If you find yourself struggling on some of these courses, I would recommend making that buy. I know I did. 
You can earn bonus points by busting debris, like signs, igloos, blocks of ice, and... Bunnies. Yes, you can run over bunnies for a massive bonus to your score. Feel free to share this video to PETA, so they can be traumatized. Now, I've never ridden a snowmobile before, so I can't say whether or not these controls are accurate. However, I have seen a few races in the Winter X Games a long time ago, and it seems pretty close. Then again, these are professional snowmobilers, and I'm a professional nothing-doer, so what do I know? What day is Thursday? But as good as these controls are, they will not save you from the last course. Lost... F***ing... Peak. Alright, I'm exaggerating a little. The track itself is not actually that difficult, I just suck ass. However, there is one turn that grinds my gears. The final hairpin. No matter how I approach this hairpin, I always fall off. Slowly, quickly, from the inside, from the outside, it doesn't matter. I ended up losing the race on my last chance, and I had to start over. Thankfully, the last checkpoint was a course ago, so I went back and eventually did it. When you complete the circuit, you unlock the super sled for the character you chose. This sled has all of its stats maxed out. In the Snowcross event, your goal isn't necessarily to win, but instead rack up as many trick points as you can across six courses. When you finish the event, if you achieve a high enough score threshold, you'll unlock one of the two extra characters. Or you can pull a Tom Brady. And cheat. Yes, this game has passwords that unlock everything in the game, meaning that all of this was for nothing. But that's okay, it gives players the option. Do I want to trek through the game and see what it has to offer? or should I enter in some codes to unlock some more stuff for me and my friends? There's even a password that allows you to race on the track you see in the title screen, so that's pretty neat. You can unlock the other characters, everybody's super sleds, mirror mode, reverse mode, that sort of stuff. And this game has multiplayer, where you and up to three friends can race each other. Two-player split-screen can be set to either vertical or horizontal. Now, I know vertical is the standard nowadays for two-player, but that's mainly due to the 16x9 aspect ratio giving you a bigger field of view. But in a game like Sledstorm, you can't see shit. But I'll give the devs prop- the blah, 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 blah. But I'll give the devs props for including it as an option. Honestly, horizontal isn't any better. They put the minimap dead center on the screen, and it's so distracting. Just remove the speedometer, because let's be real, nobody gives a shit about how fast they're going, and move player 2 score to the bottom right. Then put the map over on the right. Simple fix. So yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword here. This game also has a soundtrack filled with licensed music, but there are some original mixes composed by Jeff Dyke sprinkled in. Other than the Dragula remix, this soundtrack is pretty... forgettable. In fact, each race gives you the option to choose the song you want to play first. I always choose Dragula. It's such a shame. Sledstorm is a once a year game, but even then, I don't come back to this game that often. It's more like a once every two years game, especially considering this is the first time I touched it since 2021, the once a year games video I mentioned at the top. Graphically, it looks like any 1999 PS1 sports sim game would. It is certainly a product of its time, but unfortunately, like Street Skater, it did not sell that well. After all, it was EA's first attempt at snowmobile racing. However, EA would re-release it alongside Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and NASCAR Rumble in their 2002 Racing Collector's Edition to cash in on those who didn't have a PS2 yet. Speaking of the PS2, EA also managed to make a sequel to Sledstorm for that console, and that game put EA Sports big on the map. So maybe we can check it out sometime down the road. Or Mountain, in this case. Oh, bite me! You would have made the same joke! For now, however, I'm done with snowmobiling. Who even remembers this game? I've never heard anybody ever talk about it at all. Not even its sequel. So, this might be one of the very few, if any, proper reviews for Sledstorm that you'll find on YouTube. And that's telling. But, that's why I like checking out these kinds of games. I like shedding some light on some of the more niche subjects, and this game is no exception. If you're somebody out there who is into snowmobiling or wants to get into it, then this game is for you. Otherwise, you're not missing much. You know, I just realized something. I managed to get through an entire episode of Junior Nitro without- I'm back. Fuck!